Everyone, it is um, June 26. Time is 19.07, um, New York local time. And in this video, I want to give you a little bit of um, technical knowledge. I also want to uh, tell you some other things. So um, my channel is starting to grow a little bit, and I have a little bit of audience now. And so I want to say uh, just a couple of things about me. Um, I am not always the most agreeable person. So there's going to be some of you, um, especially if like you're Canadian um, or if you are uh, of a certain personality disposition that are going to have a difficult time with me. Um, and I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not going to change. Uh, I've been this way my entire life. And it is what it is. Um, doesn't mean I'm trying to combat with you, but uh, I'm a highly disagreeable person, and, and that personality trait is, is not going to change. I'll try to be reasonable. Um, another thing for my audience that is uh, outside the United States, whose language is uh, first language is not English, um, I understand that I speak with a very high diction. Uh, I do come from a... a a legal background. I have multiple degrees. I come from academia even though I despise academia. I come from it. And so you are going to hear me speak English at a fairly high diction and you might have difficulty in understanding me. Uh, I'm sorry for that. Uh, it's just the manner in which I speak. Uh, I don't speak slang, quote unquote. You're not going to hear me speak uh, low diction. Now, because I think I'm better than anyone, but because I that is how I've lived my life. Um, I do like to sound and speak good English. I will tell you that. So you might, you know, for my foreign audience, um, I'm sorry if you have sometimes difficulty in understanding me. Just going to put out an apology. It's all I can do because I'm not going to change the manner in which I speak. Um, okay, so in this video, another thing that I want to mention is you might wonder sometimes, well, why do I come out with so many videos? Part of the reason, and I've described this, and it, you know, I have said this before. This YouTube channel is my video journal. A video journal of trying to become a professional day trader. It is extremely difficult. Anyone who tells you that this is an easy profession is lying to you. Or maybe it's just a, a Wunderkind. Um, I am not a Wunderkind. I'm fairly smart, but no Wunderkind. Um, so, um, many of the channels that you watch out there on trading, especially if it's with options, um, are going to show you $100,000, $200,000 single trades. Uh, you can do that in Forex over time. Uh, sorry, in, well, Forex too, but in futures. It, it can be done, but this is not options, okay? Just going to let you know. Um, and a lot of those people are lying to you anyways. And if they did get a big trade, they'll lose it. Because if they push the lever once, the rat's going to push the lever twice, believe me. And if the rat doesn't know what the rat is doing, the rat's going to lose. So what I'm trying to say with that is if you see somebody on social media, uh, on whatever, that's showing you a $100,000 option trade, if that person is not a professional options trader, very likely that, that person is going to end up losing that money. Um, okay, so with that being said, I wanted to get into a topic called, I, you know, I've been thinking about this, and it's something that I have to work on in my own training, uh, own trading. And I would call it um, evolving degrees of certainty. Uh, changing degrees of certainty or letting the market develop. So one of the things that when you get into day trading you are going to uh, learn from most professional day traders is that you do need to start from a higher time frame analysis. You need to reference your daily, your weekly, and your four hour uh, candles, even your monthly candles, and, and that is true. Um, from my limited experience here and really putting in effort to try and become a professional day trader, what I will tell you is that the, the higher time frames are there, but they're also not there. 
So when you're coming down to your 15 minute, 30 minute, one hour charts, you you can't get so convicted with a higher time frame idea that it influences your short term play, your intraday volatility play to the to the point where you you get wedded to the position and then you end up taking a loss because you thought the daily candle was doing something and I promise you folks if you start trying to day trade one day late is way more than enough to blow out your account. You can't be one day late if you're trying to trade intraday volatility. So my recommendation to you would be absolutely do your higher time frame analyses. They are a key driver of price. But as with everything in day trading, it's got to be balanced. Okay, If you are trading a 15 minute chart, 10 minute chart, 5 minute chart, is the daily candle affecting, is it affecting price? 100% it is. Is it affecting it right this very second? Maybe or maybe not. You'll have to make the analysis. Just don't get wedded to your higher time frames when you're trading intraday volatility is all I'm trying to say. So you have to treat uh, your daily and weekly candles with a measure of distance. When you're trading a 15 minute chart, five minute chart, whatever, you're, in, you're trading intraday volatility, you just treat your weekly and your daily candles with um, respect and with a certain measure of distance, but don't let it over influence your intraday plays as well. So let's go to an example on a, a product I, I guess you're all familiar and I want to talk about evolving degrees of certainty. I want to talk about where in time and price um, if you let the price action develop. Let's first take our current candles. So we're well before our setup time. We're 45 minutes before the setup time. We're looking at the E-mini S&P 500. And although I can do an analysis on what this 15 minute chart is doing, I will tell you immediately that I have almost no certainty as to what the next hour is going to look like. Um, I think the next hour could come up into this buy side inefficiency. I think it could trade all the way up to this buy side inefficiency up here. It's possible we come down to this weak inefficiency lower. Uh, we could even turtle soup and come lower. Um, sometimes when you are day trading, you are going to have a very clear idea as to what you think price is about to do. And as you train algorithmic theory, as you really train any sort of day trading model, and as you train yourself to that model, there will be times that you are very confident in what the market is about to do. And that's really when you need to execute the trade. This is one of the things when you're measuring patience, Patience is measured in days, it's measured in weeks, it's measured in months in terms, of, in terms of your risk management, in terms of allowing your account equity to grow slowly over time. When you're talking about actually trading a, 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 an intraday chart, patience might be waiting another 30 seconds. Being patient might let the market develop for another five minutes. These things are all scalable and it's one of the reasons why uh, if you're not in these markets, if you're not professionally minded, if you're trading this like an amateur, on an intraday basis, right? So you're, you're not just trying to do like a buy and hold strategy or swing trading. If you are trying to trade intraday volatility, there's different measures, there's different degrees of certainty, and there's different measures of patience. So for example, let's take one of our 10 minute time frames here on the E-mini S&P 500. I don't want to talk about this move down that we had and I want to outline it for you. So here we see that the price was buy side inefficient. So I'm just going to draw that out. Where in this price chart would I feel highly confident that the S&P 500 is going to come down? Is it here where my cursor is? No. Is it here? No. Is it here? No. Is it here? No. And you're probably thinking to yourself like, well, you know, you're trying to say that you would trade perfectly. No, absolutely not. I'm saying that I'm striving for ideals here. I'm striving for getting there. I'm not telling you that I am there. Okay, and I, I think one of the difficulties that I'm having in reaching a public audience is, um, and I'm going to try and say this very politically correct, I'm dealing with a lot of less sophisticated folks. Um, you might not like me saying that. Uh, it is the truth, whether you like it or not. And so when I go on a live stream and I get nothing but, do you trade BTC? Do you trade BTC? I know what I'm dealing with. Um, so I'm going to try and describe this in a manner in which makes sense to you because I know that many of you are new to trading or you some for some reason you found my channel. 
And so I'm going to describe a very uh, temporal, a temporal phenomenon, and I'm going to try and describe it in the present tense. I'm going to try and describe this accurately. It's very easy for me in, in price data that's not moving to tell you that this is buy side inefficient and this is coming up to the 50%, this is coming up to the 70%. Where would I feel very confident that we're about to start to turn lower? I will tell you. It's right about, it's right about here, okay? It's right at about 2300, right at about 2310. These two candles. That's where my evolving degree of certainty goes from. I think this probably wants to come up and turn lower. I think it probably wants to do that. You know, it kind of looks like it wants to do that. Right, right about here is where I'm like 85% certain this thing wants to turn lower. As you train your eye, as you train your eye to algorithmic theory, as you train your eye to see inefficiencies and to see liquidity in the marketplace using only the price chart and basic drawings, over time, you will develop a growing sense of certainty as you let the market develop. Okay, as you let the market develop, you will feel a growing sense of certainty at certain points that the market is about to make a move, that the market is about to change its direction, that the market is about to do something. And it's very difficult for me to describe that to you using using still price data. But the key to your day trading in showing patience is not just showing patience in, in terms of days and weeks and months. It's shown in terms of minutes and seconds and minutes and seconds. Sometimes, by the way, you're going to be too patient. You're going to let the market run against you or it just ran against you and you really had no opportunity. You didn't see it. At that point, don't chase it. Just let it go against you. It'll come back. They almost, it almost always comes back, folks. We live in a very efficient marketplace. It, it almost always comes back. Okay. And so as you hone your day trading skills, you will have growing senses of confidence that if you let the marketplace develop and if you let the price data develop over time, there will come a point in the price data where, for example, if you're training inefficiencies, you see, you know that your inefficiencies can be drawn out into these quarters, right? We know that. We know that we can take our inefficiencies into quarters. Very easy for me to tell you Look at that. It came up right to exactly to the 75% retracement and turned lower. I didn't. I wouldn't have known that right here where, where I'm circling the price data. Would I have known that right about there? Yeah, I would have known that. I'm not lying to you. I would have seen that right there because I would have. This is exactly how I trade. This is exactly what I'm looking for. It's buy side and sell side inefficiencies and liquidity and intermarket relationships. I would have known right there. But in many instances right now in my development, as a day trader, I would have gone short this market early and not let the been been impatient for a matter of about 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes. And so one of the measures of patience that you're going to have is not hours and it's not days, it's minutes. It's can I wait another, can I squeeze this thing out, let it develop another 10 minutes? Can I squeeze this thing out, let the price data develop for another five minutes. Sometimes you're going to let it develop too long. The move is going to happen and you're not going to be involved. It might give you an opportunity to come back in if there's a retracement, for example. Okay, It might. It might not. Sometimes it's going to retrace and give you an opportunity on a pullback. Sometimes it's not. That's one of the things about pullback trading that the pullback traders don't exactly tell you. Sometimes sometimes it's, it's going to pull back. Sometimes like this, it's going to give you virtually no retracement and make an over 22-point move. You, you would have had to virtually, I'm telling you on the 10-minute chart here, to feel confident about this trade, you would have had to see it right here. It's possible. It's doable. It's difficult. But it is possible. Okay? It gave you virtually no retracement to get in. Many of you are probably thinking, well, what about these candles? Maybe. Would you do it? Maybe. Maybe. The answer is maybe. Whereas on this move lower, it did give you plenty of retracements. And you, you did have opportunities to get in on a pullback. Sometimes it's not going to give you a pullback. Sometimes you just have to get so good at day trading that you don't need a pullback. And I know that that is not something that you want to hear. Um, if you go to Warrior Trading and Brave Forex Academy and all these other people, these jokers, clowns, um, they're going to tell you that their third-party software 
or whatever they're using, they can look at, look, here's what I'm going to tell you. These markets move quickly. We're in a high interest rate environment. Even the S&P 500 doesn't move as quickly as the NASDAQ even. It still moves pretty quick. You're telling me that you can pull up your third-party software, okay? You can pull up your third-party software, so your book map or your volume profile, whatever, and you can look at your other screen, and you can instantly identify that right there, that's where price is going to turn. It's possible. I believe that it can be done, but I think that's extremely difficult. What I think is more reasonable is you are thinking of the marketplace already in inefficiency and liquidity. You already had this buy side inefficiency in your mind, so you already anticipated about you know a few hours in advance maybe, or, or give or take like 30 minutes. You already see the prices coming up to this inefficiency. You anticipate, you know that inefficiencies can uh, form dynamic support and resistance. So you're thinking to yourself already as it comes up into this inefficient price, this might turn lower. And as you see, the first time, it, you might have gotten short here. You would have, the first time it did it, 25%. Honestly, I, I'm still not there at the patience that I want to be. I probably would have gotten short here. But over time, I know I can get there to right there. That right in that 30 minute window right there. I know I can get there. I know it. Because I'm anticipating what price is going to do. I'm not I'm not reacting to it. And that and that's one of the fundamental premises that you will hear about day trading that is wrong. Um, it's my okay, let me say it's my opinion. You cannot reactionary trade price. Not in these markets. You must have a system that allows you to anticipate in some way, shape, or form. I know what mine is, inefficiencies and liquidity. I anticipate that price will see reactions off of inefficiencies. I usually like to take these things and draw them out into quarters. So I, I expect there to be a reaction, 25, 50, 75. The magnitude of that reaction, I might not know. But I'm anticipating that at these inefficient price deliveries, there's probably going to be a reaction, as that is what the design of this market is, is to be an ine be inefficient market. Okay, so you have to anticipate price. You have to have patience that's measured in 30 minutes, 40 minutes. It's not measured in days. It's measured in day trading intervals is what I'm trying to say. Can you do it with third-party software? It's pro probably, but I think, I think it's much um, more reasonable to learn how to read inefficiency and liquidity from the price data. Okay, so you don't have to go reference your eyes to another part of the screen or to another screen and then turn back and you think that that's, there's no calculation time there. There is. There's a lag between you interpreting your third party software and then you looking at the price data. And you might think to yourself, do you actually need this kind of margin of error to day trade? And kind of what I'm telling you is yes. You have to be a pattern recognition machine. It has to be subconscious. It has to be an unconscious, incompet unconscious competence to the point where you don't even have to think to yourself, this is buy side inefficient. You just look at it and your brain knows, yep, that's buy side inefficient. It's kind of towards the top of our range, kind of looks like an optimal trade entry. It's a good chance that price wants to react there. You don't even think the thoughts in your brain, that's how fast you need to act. These trading algorithms are acting very quickly. Faster than you can look over at your third-party software, I guarantee you. There's going to be plenty of guys that are older than me, wiser than me, whatever, and they're going to tell you that that's nonsense. I'm telling you from hardcore experience of trying to grind this out every day, you must anticipate price. You must, you must be unconsciously competent at what you're doing. You must see the inefficiencies and the liquidity in the marketplace using the price data and it must become such so ingrained into you that, that you don't even need to think the thoughts in your head. That is how you get to the point where you can take shorts right here. That's how you get there. That's how you get there. Anticipation. Anticipation. Knowing your degrees of certainty. Let's look right now. Live price data. 30 minutes to the Tokyo Open. Am I going to take a trade here? Am I very certain right here of what I think price is going to do? No, I'm not. I'd feel a lot better if it came up to this order block up here. Wait to see the price develop up here. It's probably going to be a few hours. But then again, could just trade trade higher. If you are looking at this price data and you have a very strong inclination as to what price is about to do in the next hour, 
then you are godly. You are way above me because I don't. I will tell you that if I spend painstaking time right now, and this takes actual time, there's a fair value gap right there. It probably is going to want to invert that. Probably going to come down a few points, like literally a point and a half trade higher. Will be my best guess. Am I going to trade that idea? No. I'm going to wait until I'm much more, like for example, here we were buy side inefficient. Right here, we were buy side inefficient. Price comes and trades up into it. Where did you know, where did you have a good idea right here that price was going to shoot lower? Where did you know? Where did you have a very strong idea? It wasn't the first tick into this buy side inefficiency because it could trade through that, invert it, and move higher. Where did you have a strong inclination that this thing was going to shoot lower? I'll tell you exactly where. Couldn't make it up to our order block. Look at that. Optimal trade entry, 61.5. 61% retracement, 61.5 right there. Optimal trade entry, bearish order block. I would tell you that the candle that I'm probably most likely to see it on, we have a little volume imbalance here, and as price is finding resistance right there, that, that right circle right there, that's probably where I would be very like 85% sure it's going to shoot lower. I wouldn't have known right here during our impulse up candle. I would not have felt very confident about it. But right there in that circle, that's where I would have felt very confident about it. And so when you go back through your price data, one of the things that I think that many of you day traders have unrealistic expectations for how competent you can be. Um, we are dealing in an electronic market that is run by computerized algorithms. Um, you can train yourself to uncomp unconscious competence and you can get very competent at what you're doing here. But you're not a trading algorithm, not yet, at least. And so you need to know, you need to understand, like give yourself some leeway, let the price develop, learn when you think you'd probably know that price is about to turn, that price is about to get a reaction, that we're about to shoot to an inefficiency. And if you do that, if you develop that skill of letting the price develop, giving it time to develop, now that time might be measured in minutes. And so many of you are still probably not understanding what I'm saying. And many of you are probably thinking that, oh, when he says let the, let the price develop, he's probably talking about like a fixed amount of time. That's not what I'm talking about. It could be five minutes, as long as it's enough price data to give you a strong idea of what price is about to do. It could be two hours. It could be three hours in the overnight session before you really have a strong idea of what price is about to do in the, in the near term. Okay. And uh, so my last thing about the higher time frames that I wanted to talk about, they are 100% affecting price. And when you do your tape reading and you are analyzing price data that's not moving, use your higher time frames. When you are trading intraday volatility, don't get wedded to the higher time frames. That you can't. You got to you have to focus in and hone in on your intraday volatility. No other way to put that. Um, so I wanted to give out this, this little video on growing degrees of certainty, um, measuring patience on a day trading scale. So that might be a couple hours, might be five minutes. Letting the price data develop to where you are, to the point at which you are pretty confident. It's screaming at you that price should do something here. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention, I am still willing to record my live trading. In terms of live streaming, I'm probably going to make a separate video about this. I come to realize that I can't do it. Uh, most people irritate me, as you know. And every time I put up the live stream, it's going to be a bunch of, it's going to be 20 questions. It's going to be question hour and it's going to be, do you trade BTC? And I can't do it. I can't hone in my craft and focus on the market when I got do you trade BTC lined up on my chat window. It's a distraction. Um, I can't do it. Okay. Trades by Matt is 
a saint for being able to trade live with a live chat box. I can't do it. I can trade live in a recording, okay, that's not so interactive, uh, and handle the comments that come in like, what is a fair value gap? I can handle that on, on a recording. I can't handle it because it irritates me. And you're probably thinking, this guy is short-tempered, or this guy gets easily irritated. Yes, I'm very irritable. Um, all, of your, all of your questions about my personality, the answer is yes. So let's just move past that. I open up a live stream and I'm getting a whole bunch of people's other opinions, others' opinions about what Price is doing. You're all going to have your opinions about what's going on. You're all going to think that I'm full of shit and you're all going to think that whatever bullshit you're using is correct and you're going to want to preach that to me during my live stream and when I'm actually trying to trade and I'm trying to get there. And I can't handle it. I can't handle it. Um, I can handle your questions in the YouTube comment box. I can talk on a Discord chat window. But I want to be very clear about something. In case it's not already, like, very clear. I have tried everything that you have tried. Your Bollinger Bands. Your Indicators. Your Book Map your volume profile, cumulative delta, whatever tool you think that I have not tried, I have tried. I've used level two data. I'm I'm set in my ways now. I'm never going back. So you can talk to me ad nauseum about why you think that the liquidity can be seen on Bookmap. It can be. Bookmap will show you the liquidity. I think the tool is distracting. I think the big bubbles on the chart and hearing it constantly say whatever it says is very distracting. I also think, and I know for a fact, that a huge amount of those orders are going to be pulled before they're filled. When I'm looking at the price chart, I can tell you where the liquidity is. It's not hard to see where the liquidity is. Where is the liquidity? Where is the liquidity? Is that, is that, I mean, is that really hard? There are constantly huge orders in the marketplace sitting just below an old low. There's resting liquidity that's sitting just above an old high. And they're sitting there ready to take aggressing orders into the marketplace to use the CME's language. Bookmap, I'm sure the company is great. I'm sure that the tool that some people can use it and make it profitable. It is a redundant tool. The company's model is redundant. What do I mean by redundant? If English is not your first language, what does redundant mean? Superfluous, extraneous, Secondary? How many synonyms do I have to use? The liquidity is always at the same spots. Okay? I'm sure that Bookmap has great employees, great people, good software, whatever. It's redundant. It is superfluous. It is not telling you anything that the price data is not already telling you if you're listening. It's not. The resting liquidity is always at the same spot. And the aggressing orders are going to match with said resting orders. That's how the market works. Aggressing orders move the market. The matching orders, the matching algorithms. I've, I've, sent, I've made a video on the CME's, CME group's matching algorithms. What is happening right here when price makes a new low? There was an aggressing order in the marketplace. There are resting orders from lead market makers, uh, from from average trading participants. There, usually most of it's going to be market makers. And as there's an aggressing order that comes below a new low, it is then divided first on a FIFO basis with the resting orders, and then if it's if there are not enough resting, there's not enough resting liquidity at the first price point, it will then that aggressing order will then be divided pro rata pro rata um, to the to the other resting liquidity that is sitting in the book or the CME's algorithm will be um, so that was lead market maker or it'll be threshold configurable it's matching it's matching the aggressing order using one of the CME groups algorithms with the resting liquidity it's always resting there always every high every low said resting liquidity is always there. 
I don't need book map to know that. I don't need volume profile to know that. I don't need volume profile to know where the market was buy side inefficient because it's a big fat black candle that doesn't have a wick coming back through it. Okay? If you look at your volume profile, and I know this is going to blow your mind. It's actually you probably already clicked off the video because uh, you think I'm foolish and I just haven't learned my ways. Have you done your research into the CME matching algorithm? Do you know what that means? Do you know what an aggressing order is? Do you know what a resting order is? Okay. That would be a low volume note on a volume profile right there. That would be right there. Don't need the volume profile to see it. It's right there. There it is. It's a low volume node. Oh look, high volume node down here. It's a high volume node right there. A price at which price traded efficiently. Okay? A price at which price traded efficiently and most of the candles were overlapping. High volume node. Low volume node. High volume node. Low volume node. I do not need your hokey third party tools to see it. The resting orders are always at the same place. The high volume and the low volume nodes are exactly where the price data shows you that they are. I don't need a third party tool to see it. And I'm not paying for your third party tool to see it and I think it's hokey. Okay? Hokey would be the accurate word that I think that third party tools like Bookmap are. The technical term I think would be extraneous, superfluous, or uh, unnecessary. But that being said, I'm sure that they're all great people and great company, and and um, I'm not trying to like I'm not trying to commit slander here. The product works; it does show you resting liquidity. I'm not slandering Bookmap. I am providing my opinion. So Bookmap wants to come and sue me. Gonna have to come to my jurisdiction and sue me, uh, and you're gonna have to explain how this is slander because it's not. I'm telling you, this is my opinion. Um, okay. So the live streaming, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't get 30 questions in my chat box of do you trade BTC? I can't do it. I'm going to answer that question once and for fucking all. No. Done. No, I don't trade BTC. Don't own any. Probably won't own any again. Not interested. Let me look at the BTC chart. Oh look, it did nothing. It's efficiently trading, like it always efficiently trades. Shocking. Did nothing. All of you folks that are in underdeveloped countries or whatever, or you're underage, and all you can trade is crypto, for whatever reason all you can trade is crypto, you're in a ban you're in a sanctioned country, whatever, I'm sorry. This is not the channel for you. I trade Futures and the Forex. I f trade futures, bonds, energies. I trade futures, okay? I don't trade crypto. So I can't do the live stream anymore. It is distracting to me. I don't want to get your 20 questions of do I trade crypto. I am irritable. I'm all of those things. What I can do for you, here's what I can do for you. I can give you out when I feel that I have made some progression in my understanding of day trading, I'll make a video on it. I'll make video reviews. I will video my live trading where I can't see your inane questions and do you trade BTC on the chat box. That's what I can handle. Other than that, yes, you do irritate me. No, I don't like you. And no, I don't trade BTC. That's it. Okay? So what this channel can provide you, I, I understand that the live streams will probably drive the most subscribership, and I have to sacrifice that. Unfortunately, LP Trades was probably correct. Don't tell him that. He said it in his very passive-aggressive way that irritated me. He was probably correct, though. The live stream is distracting to me, and I can't day trade with the live stream. I'm sorry. I know that many of you want to see the action. That's not what day trading is. It's not. Day trading is a mathematical model 
trading small, risk management, you name it. That's what real day trading is. Now, if you want to go and gamble on options and go go see if you can make $100,000 trading an options contract, it is possible. It is doable. There are people who have done it. But that is not what I want to do, and that is not what this channel is geared towards. I don't trade options. Okay? I have before. I might again in terms of just selling options, but that's all I'm interested in, selling premium. So, if you think that this is going to be an action junkie channel, I'm sorry, this is not the channel for you. And it pains me to say that. I've always wanted to be where the action is. I get a gambler's high off of it. And sometimes these markets move a lot. Sure. But that's not what I want to do with this YouTube channel. The purpose of this YouTube channel is to video journal my own journey into professional day trading and see whether I can get there or not. If I can't get there, fine. Do something else. But I want to get there. I'm trying to get there. And I'll make videos for you, video journaling my increased understanding as time goes on. That's all I can offer you. Video recordings. Can't do the live streams anymore. I can't handle 30 questions of do you trade BTC. I can't do it. That is all. I know that this has been overly dramatic, and I'm sorry for that. This was a big decision for me that I had to make in terms of what I want to do with my YouTube channel. I understand that my subscribership without the live streams is not going to grow as quickly. I'm not going to get to monetization as quickly. Um, I know that. I know that if I'm not live streaming, I'm not going to get there as quickly with YouTube. But that's a sacrifice that I'm willing to make, and that is all. Um, I'm going to leave you with that. Uh, with that, um, I do hope that you have a good day. Um, I might make a video during the London session. I will record my live trading. I just can't live stream it. Um, that is all I have for you. Bye.